Hi guys, welcome back. So in this particular video, I am going to discuss about uh, the predicate argument structure. In this predicate argument structure, we are having resources. So in that resources, I am going to discuss about frame net. Okay. So before getting started with this video, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel. So now let's get started. Predicate argument structure. I think we already discussed about predicate argument structure in brief in one of my previous video. If you haven't watched it yet, then please do go and watch that particular video and come back to this because you can't understand uh, what I'm telling in this particular video if you haven't watched that video. Okay, let's revise what is mean by predicate argument structure. Okay, I've already said that predicate is nothing but a verb and argument is nothing but an action. So whatever the thing which comes under verb is nothing but an action and the thing which comes under the noun is nothing but an object or entity. We can consider it as object or entity. Okay, now let's see the first point about this predicate argument structure. Predicate argument structure also known as semantic role labeling. Okay, so what we can call this predicate argument structure is you can also call it as semantic role labeling is a method used to identify the roles of different parts of a sentence. Okay, so what, what we are going to do in this particular uh, predicate argument structure is you are going to identify the roles. Why you are going to identify only the roles? So we will be discussing it in the resources, okay? Now, the second point, the predicate is usually a verb. So I have already said that uh, whatever that comes under verb is nothing but a predicate, right? So then what are arguments? Nouns. Nouns are usually considered as arguments. Those are nothing but objects or entities. Okay. So now let me erase this all things. Now let's discuss about resources. So be before discussing these particular points, first you have to know what I mean by resources, right? What are resources? I mean, why we you why we want resources for this predicate argument structure? See. These resources are nothing but a type of systems which helps us to identify the predicate argument structure in a given sentence. Okay, so what this particular resources will do is it will help us to identify the predicate argument structure in a given sentence. So why you need to uh, identify predicate ar or arguments in a sentence? Why you need it in order to understand the meaning of a particular sentence? We need predicate argument structure. Okay. So what are the importance of this particular resources? What are the importance? What is the importance of it? So like you can translate from one language to another language and question answering. Many of the chatbots, if you see in online, they are nothing but question answering chatbots. Okay. And even virtual assistants. Virtual assistants understand commands better. So these virtual assistants are same as question answering. Okay. So we are having two types of resources in order to identify the predicate argument structure. The first one is FrameNet and the second is PropBank. So in this particular video, we are going to discuss only about FrameNet. Okay. So in the next video, we will discuss about what is mean by PropBank and all. Okay. Now let's see what is mean by FrameNet. Okay. Now let's see what is mean by FrameNet. Uh, before that, see. In a frame net, frame means nothing but a situation. A situation is considered as a frame in frame net resource. Okay, so now let's see the first point. Frame net looks at how words are used in different situations. So those situations are nothing but frames. Okay, and identifies the roles that other words play in this situation. See. The first thing that frame nets will do is whenever a particular sentence is given, a particular sentence is given, what they are going to do is they are going to identify the situation. Okay. Then they are going to identify the roles. Roles are nothing but you can uh, call it as entity. You can call entity as roles. Okay. No worries at that. So this is what frame net does. And the second point is it is based on the theory of frame semantics. So what this frame semantics mean is, I mean, what this particular theory says that is, it suggests that the meaning of a word can be understood in terms of typical situations it describes. See, uh, starting uh, starting from the NLP lectures, I have been using something called as bank word, right, in order to explain you the ambiguity, right? 
see how you gonna uh, understand the context of this particular word by observing the surrounding words like right? or you can actually understand the situation you can actually understand a particular situation after knowing that situation you can you can come to know or you can get to know in which context that particular word is used okay so let's discuss the key elements what are the key elements in framenet so the one is situation that is nothing but a frame a frame is nothing but a situation frame is one of the key elements in framenet and the situation or scenario is nothing but a frame so in that frame only you will be writing the roles here the roles are nothing but the frame elements okay frame elements are nothing but the roles played by the different participants in a frame okay so now let let's come to lexical units what are lexical units lexical units is nothing but a pair of word and its meaning this is a word and its meaning so this pair is nothing but a lexical unit now let's discuss an example just um, just you will get to know how by using a certain situation how you are going to understand the meaning of a particular word okay so now let's understand that with an example see take an example of a break word see break is having two different meanings i mean in two different situations it the meaning or the context of it changes see uh, the frame one they gave a situation so what situation they have given us in frame one break means you are breaking a rule so let's draw a box like this and there you mention frame one like breaking a rule write it like this breaking a rule okay this is the situation in this frame one and the other frame you considered as frame two so in frame two what is the situation frame two is nothing but you are breaking an object so write like this breaking an object okay now what are the roles see the roles are the person who is breaking the rule he is nothing but a breaker so this is one role what this breaker means is the person who is breaking that particular rule he is a breaker and what he is breaking he is breaking a rule so it is also a role in that so you have to list out like this then the roles in frame 2 so in frame 2 who is breaking this particular object the breaker right and what he is breaking he is breaking an object so these are nothing but the roles see now try to understand try to analyze this particular thing see you have mentioned a breaker what it means he is breaking something he is breaking something what he is breaking he is breaking one rule that means the situation come the situation one comes into the frame now so you can clearly tell that he is breaking a rule by using this roles only okay next come to the frame 2 there what roles they have given so breaker and an object what the breaker is doing the breaker is breaking an object so in the situation 2 only you can get to know that he is breaking an object by seeing this certain rules i mean roles only not rules by by uh, knowing certain roles you can actually come to know the context of a particular word okay this is the main use of predicate argument structure okay so now let's understand the working of this uh, predicate argument structure how it actually sorry working of framenet i'm sorry it is working of framenet let's understand the working of framenet so first one what you are going to do so first the same thing the same thing that uh, i have explained first what you are going to do you have to mention the situations you have to identify the frames you have to identify the situations after identifying the situations you have to identify the elements in it i mean you have to identify the roles in it and after that see this step is not mandatory this third step is not mandatory but if you want you can mention it okay and see this is the last example i am going to tell you this is the last example so let's let's understand this example okay see Mm. See, they they already mentioned the frame. That is nothing but by. Okay, this is the frame. So now let's draw that particular frame. 
wait, wait, wait. So if you watched my previous video about predicate argument structure, there I have given one example. So if you haven't watched, please watch so you can clearly understand what I am doing in this particular example. Okay. So here already they given you the situation that is uh, you write frame as uh, commerce by right. This is the situation. Okay. This is the frame. And what is the sentence? John bought a car from Mary for $20,000. Okay. Now, about whom we are discussing, about whom we are discussing, actually, we are discussing about John. Okay. So, what actually John done is he bought a car. Okay. See, this board will be having different things like from whom he bought that particular car, from where he bought that particular car, why he bought that particular car, or for how much, like how much, for how much he has buy that particular car. Okay. So let's understand from whom he bought that particular car from Mary, right? So you here you can mention from whom he bought that car, he bought that car from Mary, right? So how much Mary sold, I mean, for how much money Mary sold that car, sold it for $20,000. So what Mary sold, what Mary sold, Mary sold a car to John. So this is how you can write a frame whenever uh, they give you an example like this. See, basically they won't uh, give you uh, any example and just uh, draw the frame like this. They won't generally ask, but it is better if you write this example <laughs> okay so this is about frame net so in the next video we will be discussing about prop net i mean prop bank sorry so in the next video we are going to discuss about prop bank okay see one thing i have said is that many of you are watching my videos but haven't subscribed yet so if you really really like this content then please do consider subscribing now Okay, at the same time, so if you have any exams nearby, then please do comment and mention your exam date. So I, I will try to complete this NLP series as soon as possible. Okay, thank you.